What's up everyone, welcome back to FM Scout and in today's video we are doing tactic testing. That is right and who better to start tactic testing with than Nap himself. Nap is a fantastic tactics creator, football manager, years and years has been going. So uh, now with the beta, now with FM22 we're going to test out some of his beta tactics. Right then, so before we start the video guys, make sure to subscribe, hit that like, and also comment as well if obviously you use some of these tactics or you've got tactics that you want to upload to uh, FM Scat. So yeah, go ahead, do it, and then one day hopefully we can maybe get a video on it as well if there isn't already one there. Um, and if you've got time after that, subscribe to my channel as well guys, show me a bit of support, my link is in the description. Back to the video. So here we go with the Echoes 451 Nap Tactic. It's obviously the classic V-shaped tactic. It's a very popular shape. Um, I've used it before. I'm no doubt you lot have used a variation of it before. So uh, yeah, the team's taking part in the test, guys. Man U, West Ham, PSG and FC Lorient. Four teams, all little bits of different quality. Obviously top teams and middle-ish teams, uh, underdogs as well. Um, so hopefully... It does absolutely fantastic for all four teams. And if you can't download, guys, I'll go through all the instructions. If you can download, it will be in the link. Just click it. It was saying to FM Scan, you can download it from there. All right. So cool. Let's start off with the instructions then. Advance forward. Inside forward left. Inside forward right. Box to box midfielder. Mazala. Wing back left. Wing back right. Four plane defender left. Four plane defender right. And the sweeper keeper, set piece instructions, corners, defending right and left. And attacking left and right. Still using the Beery 442 system with the uh, set pieces. Uh, the taker is aiming for the near post, guys. Free kicks, defending right and left. And attacking left and right. And throw ins, defending right and left. And finally, attacking left and right. And it's the long throw-ins there. Back to the tactic. It's an attacking mentality. Obvious, all right. Attacking mentality seems to be the way to go at the minute. All right, not including the fact that you're going to have to probably rotate your players a lot more. You're attacking, you're pressing. Um, so that's a big part of this game now, rotation and player fitness, guys. So just remember that. In possession, fairly wide on the attacking width. Approach play, passing space, overlap and left and right. And play out defence. Slightly shorter on the passing directness with a higher tempo. Low crosses in the final third. Work ball into box and run at the defence. In transition, counter press and counter with a distribute to the full backs and throw it long for the goalkeeper instructions. And then out of possession, you are using the offside trap with a much higher line of engagement. A standard defensive line. Uh, force opposition outside on the defensive width. Much more often on the trigger press. Prevent short goalkeeper distribution and get stuck in. <sighs> And there's, there's all the instructions, guys. Um, hopefully it does fantastic. And uh, stay tuned so we can have a look at all the results at the end of the season. Right then, welcome back everybody. And here we are starting off in the Premier League with Man U and West Ham. And by looking at the table, they didn't do too bad. Obviously, Man U won the league, which is always a massive plus. Uh, West Ham, awesome. Fifth place, European football next season for them. Um, I've seen some tests and West Ham actually struggle sometimes. So to see them fifth is a big big result i have been looking at the si forums with people using this tactic and, and there has been some who have uh, had newcastle and they've obviously made the 200 million pound whatever transfers that they've made but they actually ended up finishing first in the league using this tactic so it can be exceptional at times all right but it is a tactics test remember that everybody obviously when you're pulling it into your team it might not do so well or you might have to give it a little bit more time it might not be instant so on and so forth, but uh, with tactics testing, we try and give you a, a varied idea of how good it could do. Um, but yeah, nice one. So if we go to the top three players uh, for all the player stats, Cristiano Ronaldo, number one on goals with 33. And then uh, Antonio for West Ham coming joint second with 18. Average rating, Fernandez for Man U coming second there, 7.68. Assist, you've got Fernandez again. And you've also got the left back, Creswell, for uh, West Ham coming third with 12. Player of the matches, Fernandez is there with uh, nine player of the matches. And Henderson was used predominantly in this whole season over De Gea. Um, 22 clean sheets for him. That's that's pretty decent. <laughs> that's that's pretty decent. 22 clean sheets out of 38 games. 
for uh, for Man U there. So yeah, nice one. So Manchester United's competitions then. Did they win anything? No. So European Champions Cup got knocked out by Liverpool in the semi-final. Carabao Cup fifth round Man City and the Carabao Cup uh, FA Cup by Man City as well. So they got knocked out by big teams, but it's a shame that they didn't win anything apart from just the Premier League. Uh, if we go to the squad then, how did the squad do overall on the average ratings? Best player was Fernandez, 16 goals, 28 assists. Biggest goal scorer was Ronaldo, 43 and 2. Um, an idea as well, guys, obviously with the set pieces, if you are going to be Manu with Ronaldo, you know how powerful he is in the air uh, as heading as well. So it might be wise putting him attacking the near post to complement this tactic and Ronaldo's um, prowess in the air, as you would say. Um, and he might score a lot more. All right, and then obviously below them, uh, Fernandez, Maguire, Maguire got eleven goals, set pieces for uh, the big centre back there, uh, and Greenwood getting ten goals, and then biggest creators in the team, only three players getting double digits: Fernandez, Shaw, and Sancho. If we go to the analyst report, that's the one. That's the one I was looking for. Uh, full stats, guys. There's only 121 goals. Now that's I've seen higher, but you are actually only using a one striker tactic. It's normally the two striker tactics that get you a lot more goals. Um, but you only conceded 40, which is pretty decent in the Premier League. All right, data hub then. If we look at the general performances, you are doing a lot better than the other teams in the league when it comes to the averages. Obviously, the goals per game is high. Expected goals is high. Conceded is 0 0.58 which is very low, uh, so nice one there. Team attacking is um, is above average. Overall match momentum obviously doing well. And then, yeah, general performance, performing well above average. So everything's looking dandy, basically. Uh, team attacking, you can see goals per game. Fouls against is high because we're obviously getting in dangerous areas. Um, expected goals here. And then, yeah, looking good. Obviously, the uh, shots on target ratio is... It's not massive, but I suppose when you're getting a lot of shots off, the ratios are going to change. the The averages are going to go lower because you're getting loads on at the end of the day. All right, so uh, yeah, nice one, man. You nice one. All right, so if we go to West Ham, then so they were the middleish team that I tested, and to come fifth is I think it's pretty great to be honest. All right, you got Tottenham there finishing ninth. You got Chelsea finishing sixth. All right, so yeah, fifth place is pretty decent for West Ham. Did they get any competitions? No. All right, so they weren't in the uh, got knocked out in the second round of the Euro Cup, FA Cup fifth round, Leicester, and then Carabao Cup semi final. Not bad against Man City. The final there was four one over both legs. So uh, yeah, not great. Let's go straight to the squad then. So only four players actually only got decent average ratings in the green. Obviously. I see average ratings in the green. A decent-ish rating is actually about 9.8, 9, uh, 6.8, 6.9 there. Normally average, done well, normal kind of game. Um, but Aaron Creswell was your best player with 20 assists, one goal. Biggest goal scorer is Antonio. Zuma, centre-back again, guys. So if you're someone who's got some good centre-backs on you, they might be picking up quite a few goals. All right, so, yeah, it's going quite a lot. Biggest assists, Creswell, four nows, and uh, Bowen there, 20, 11, and 11. And then... Analyst report, full stats, so 112 goals for um, for West Ham, and then 66 conceded. So you actually conceded more than you scored, uh, more than you played, which is a little bit bad. All right, might have been a little bit, a uh, little bit leaky for West Ham. You might need obviously a bit more quality in the back um, for it to be a bit better effectively when it comes to defensive work. <laughs> Um, data hub then obviously you can see here they're still not actually doing bad on the average ratings we're just on the outside of everything apart from the pass completion um, the same with the team attacking all right it's pretty similar to man U. to be fair we're just just smaller in every way but you're a smaller team so yeah yeah not bad not bad so if we actually go to the league then how how did these two teams perform to other teams in the league on here. Look, so most goals, Liverpool was top, Man U did come second, West Ham came fourth. Possession wise, normally with these kind of tactics, you don't do well on possession or, or pass completion, to be fair. You can see there we're not even in the top eight. Um, dribbles made, Man U third, fifth for West Ham. Fewest conceded, not bad defensively for Man U. All right, came first, you only conceded 22. And uh, West Ham's creeped in there, sixth as well, only conceding 41. So even though it looked like they conceded a lot at the start when I said that there were 60-odd goals, 
Um, when it comes to just the league, the sixth. So, yeah, when you look at it like that, guys, it's not too bad. All right, so let's head over to France then. PSG are an elite team. We just want to see some big numbers here, guys. And uh, FC Lorient are the underdogs of League One. So how did they get on? <laughs> not bad. All right, PSG, I'm always expecting them to top the league. We just want to know by how much. FC Lorient, though. No. Nah. No. Nah. Underdogs predicted 18th, guys, and they've just qualified for the Champions League. Not bad. Not bad at all. Top threes now. We've got Mbappe surprisingly, surprisingly only coming third uh, with 21 goals. But he did play mostly on the wings, which is a shame. Obviously, you would play him as an adva advance forward. But that's something you can do if you download the tactic. Play him as an advance forward or play Messi as the uh, advance forward if you want. Whichever you prefer. All right, I prefer Mbappe. I think it's a little bit more dangerous uh, now compared to Lino Messi, obviously. Back in the past, it would have been Messi. But average ratings, number one is Messi with 7.66. And then you've got Ramos, 7.56. Neymar there coming third. Assists, Messi and Lefay. All right, for FC Lorient, joint first. Both got 18 assists. Player of the match is Neymar and Messi, first and second. And then clean sheets is Donnarumma there for PSG with 18 clean sheets. PSG's competitions did the win out. Just the trophies, just champions. And they played, yeah. 5-1. 5-1. Oh, that was a thrashing, eh? Nice. Um, but apart from that, they didn't win the Champions Cup or the French Cup, which is... They normally win the French Cup quite a bit at the time, but uh, not this time around, I'm afraid. But it's a cup game. That's that's even more random, the tactics test, to be fair. And if you have a tactics test and cups, then... Yeah. <laughs> Let's go straight to the squad, then. So loads of players there getting some decent average ratings. Your best player was Messi with 15 goals, 21 assists. Biggest goal scorers, Mbappe, Neymar, Icardi, and Ramos. Ramos got 17 goals. And then Messi. At Messi, at, how can Messi score less than Ramos? Wow. <laughs> and he played more games. See? The power of set pieces, guys. It's massive. Uh, and then just below Messi, you got Kimpembe. All right, 12 goals for him. So, yeah. Wicked, wicked set pieces on this one. Got to be for the uh, centre-backs to score that many goals. And that's with a lot of the teams in the test as well. So, yeah, biggest creators, guys. Uh, Messi, Neymar, and Hakimi there, 21, 17, and 11. Four numbers, 146 goals, only 33 conceded. Nice one, PSG. Uh, Data Hub, it's just, it's just going to be demolition. All right, it's going to be way out on every area. All right, goals per game conceded is less than half a goal. Uh, you're expected to uh, concede less than just over half a goal. <laughs> shots per game, 21 shots per game on average. All right, so you can get a little bit more than that as well. So, yeah, it's, it is. It's PSG. All right, it's good. you're going to batter. You're going to absolutely batter everyone. Uh, so, yeah, nice one. FC Lauren, underdogs. No more. All right, they are now Champions League contenders uh, next season. Are they going to get far and win it? Probably not, but they're there. They're there. You can start growing from here right now. Uh, competitions for them then. 11th round, knocked out by PSG there in the French Cup. Uh, go to the squad. Quite a few players, to be fair, for the underdogs, getting some decent ratings. Uh, best player was Jens. And then uh, biggest goal scorer was Moffy and Laurente. All right, 8 and 17. Biggest creator was Lefay right there with 20. Everyone else in single digits. Uh, biggest numbers then, let's have a look. Only 69 goals scored, which is not a lot, but you are predicted 18th at the end of the day. All right, and then uh, 47 conceded. Data Hub, let's have a look. Underdogs is... You're just touching inside, all right? You are expected to get scored against quite a bit. But when it comes to conceding, in, in reality, you're just on the outside of the averages, doing pretty well, to be fair, for, for who you are. Uh, goals per game, 1.61 again, on the outside of the averages, doing well all around there. Um, so, yeah, you can see the team attacking there. Not bad. Obviously, you're getting a lot of dribbling uh, dribbles made in the game, but that's what you normally have when you, when you play attacking and overlapping and all that. Shizney. <laughs> oh dear. Um, so yeah, nice one. FC Lorient. Obviously, if we go to League One and we go to the team overviews, most goals. PSG came first with 112. Lorient there coming sixth with 61. So not bad for them. Fewer shots against PSG doing defensive uh, defensively 
solid work right there best pass completion as normal they're not really in there most possession as well most dribbles made psg and fc lauren doing a lot of dribbling guys um a few has conceded their psg and conceded 17 so it's actually with the topish team it's pretty defensively solid uh, and then fc lauren there joint sixth doing uh pretty well so yeah clean sheets psg 24 fc lauren 12 so yeah not bad not not bad not bad at all, all right? And obviously, tactics can do a lot better when you're playing them. These are just tactics tests. It just gives us the chance to test a lot of teams in one go rather than fully doing seasons, and it's it's an efficiency thing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, try it out, guys. Let us know how it is in the lower leagues as well because we haven't done the tests in the lower leagues, but hopefully it does fantastic. And um, good luck in your saves if you do decide to use this, use this tactic, guys. All right, and give a... Give good old Nap a big thumbs up as well. So, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully this tactic works for you. And if it does, subscribe, like, and leave a comment, guys. And uh, we'll see you in the future. All right, this is FM Scout. I'm Tucker Jobs. See you later. Bye.